Good morning, High Point Church Online. I'm Miriam. And I'm Catherine. And we're so happy to have you here this morning. And if this is your first time, we're especially happy to see you today. Yes. Um, so we had a great event that happened with us yesterday. We did. Our women's event happened yesterday. It was the My Favorite Things event where we bring, each of us bring like our favorite item and then we like share is it was like like a wet white elephant kind of idea, right? And then like raffle or whatever. Yeah, and then the person would go pick them from their number and just yeah. pick from their favorite pile. So like we got to go home with someone else's favorite, favorite thing. thing. So what? What did you really want to bring, Miriam? Well, what I really wanted to bring was the whole store Target. <laughs> whole store, which I would have gladly gone home with. <laughs> but since the limit was only $10, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of my favorite things at Target is like snacks. Like they yeah. have a great trail mix section that's huge. Wow. You I know, know so. That I thought about that. Oh, yeah. Like they have like every kind of combination yeah. sweet, salty, sweet and salty. <laughs> like it's great. <laughs> um, my favorite thing is French fries. And it's funny because this event, like the idea was to bring, you know, like a candle or coffee or a, a blanket. And all I wanted to do was bring like a whole big bag of French fries. So what I did instead was I brought a gift card to go get French fries. Okay. That works. Cause that's my favorite thing. But it was fun. I actually really enjoy getting together with our ladies, learning what our oh, favorite yeah. things are. So let us know in the comments if there's something you go into Target for that's just like, you know, your favorite mug, if you have a favorite book, <laughs> anything. Let us know. Guy or girl, guys can participate too. Yes. We want to know. Like, we actually were just talking about air fryers are also amazing. Those are not $10. They're not $10, but, but they are <laughs> amazing if you have not gotten an air fryer. Yeah, let's have a little recommendation <laughs> from the group this morning and let's just just share our favorite things. But it was. It was a fun time. We loved being able to get together, yeah. have community. And guys, don't worry. We didn't forget about you. We have our men's conference coming up. We'll give you more details about that at the end of service. But until then, let's, let's kind of continue what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Like we say every week here at High Point, you're serious about fun, but we're also serious about Not faith. <laughs> so we're going to continue. Let's actually have our time of offering. This okay. is a good time to talk about Honestly, the importance of what our faith is, is to give to God, is to give back to God. He's given so much to us, mm -hmm. sacrificed so much for us. And so we want to have this time of giving, of offering. We invite you guys to participate in that. What do they need to know to do that actually? Text HP info to 97,000 yes. and you'll get all the information mm -hmm. on all the ways to give um, to High Point Church. Yes. And we do right now have a special fund as well to help with what's going on in the Ukraine. We know that there's so much going on over there. We can't even get into it right now, but we want to sow into that. We want to do what we can to help. So we have many ways that you can give. Again, text HVN's info to 97,000. <laughs> and we've got Pastor Andy coming this oh, morning, yep. giving a great message. So before we do that, Miriam, why don't, will you pray for us this morning? Sure. Awesome. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to be here this morning and to congregate and listen to the word, Heavenly Father, as we go into um, the week, we have something to fortify us, Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, to edify us, Lord, and just to help us and just to guide us, Heavenly Father. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to High Point Church. My name is Andy. I'm the lead pastor here. It's a pleasure to be with you. Grateful to be worshiping with you online, wherever you're streaming from. Uh, thankful for you. Let's jump right in today. Uh, I today, I want to speak to you about growing strong in your foundations with Jesus. Foundations uh, of the faith. Some of you might be watching and streaming and, and you don't really have much foundation at all. You're new to all this. You're, you're here because you want to learn and you want to hear and understand Awesome. So happy that you are here. We're going to begin putting some fresh foundations in your life. And for some of you, you've grown up maybe around church, come to church, and you know the right things to say. You've got the right behavior. Things have kind of shaped and shifted and you just know things, but you don't really understand it, right? You don't, you haven't grasped it. And so what you need is just like everybody else is a more firm foundation, a stronger foundation, and that's where we find ourselves today over the next couple of weeks. We're going to build a stronger foundation in faith. Jesus, in John chapter 13, uh, verse 12, he's, he's, it's the, one of the last moments he has with the disciples before he's arrested and he's taken to the cross. And, and he actually takes this moment to wash the disciples' feet. And he takes off his outer garment and he washes their feet. And it would have been a sweaty moment, a tiring moment, an exhausting moment, and a filthy moment, right? It would have taken a minute to wash everybody's feet in this moment. And when he's finished, he puts his outer garment back on. He stands up and he looks at the disciples and he says, do you understand what I have done for you? Do you understand what I've done for you? I love this question because it's far greater than just this significant moment where Jesus is modeling what love looks like and servant leadership looks like. It's a question that should penetrate every single heart that's watching. Do you really understand what Jesus has done for you? Do you really understand your current condition, your current plight? Right, the, 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 the manner in which you find yourself. Because if you don't know where you really stand before a perfect and holy and amazing God, then we'll never really appreciate what this perfect and holy and amazing God has done for us. That's where we find ourselves today. Hold that thought. We're going to get into the Bible here in just a second, but this series that we're in, Firm Foundations, I'm going to be teaching a lot. I'm going to be literally informing you and raising the level of understanding that you have regarding some biblical terms and a little bit of theology. And it's not going to be boring. We're going to keep this thing fresh, right? Because there's, these are things that you maybe have heard, but you didn't really understand or know the significance of. How about this? In 2004, uh, there's a, a marksman. His name is, is uh, Matt Emmons. He's in the Olympics, and he's going for gold, right? He's considered the greatest marksman in the world at this time. And if you know anything about a rifle shooting in the Olympics, they shoot from three positions. They're on their stomach, they're on their knees, and then they're on their feet. And they shoot about 50 meters, which is about half of a football field, okay? And the amount of precision... The amount of detail and care and training that goes into it is unbelievable. Now, maybe you're watching and you've got some training, you know, maybe military training, and you, you know, this is something that you've got in your back pocket. I don't, right? When it comes to learning to fire a weapon between heartbeats, that's the level of precision these Olympic marksmen are using to fire their weapons. They're Literally shooting that rifle between heartbeats. They know it. They've, they know, they've measured, they, they've got it down, right? Can you imagine being that precise? And so Matt lines up. He only needs uh, a mediocre shot, and he's got a gold medal in the bag, right? Gold. He lines up, shoots that gun. Bullseye. Only problem is that no score is registering above the target. And even the announcers are a little bit confused if you watch some of the video of it. And it's clearly a, it's a great shot. And, and come to find out, Matt, with all of his precision and all of his training, had lined his shot up 
and shot across his lane into the target of his opponent's lane. He had missed the mark, completely missed his target, hit the other target right where he wanted to, but it didn't matter because it wasn't his target. He missed the mark, and instead of getting a mediocre score in the final round of the Olympics, he got zero points, and instead of having gold, he walked away in eighth place. He missed the mark. You ever missed the mark? Of course you have, right? Although most of you have never missed the mark as it pertains to competing in the Olympics, uh, plenty of times you've missed the mark. You, you went in for an apology, right? And it just didn't come out the way that it, you were trying to apologize. You were trying to fix things. You were trying to make it right, but you missed the mark. Some of you know what it's like to be trying to just park your car, right? And you, you know, you park the car, you open the door and your tires are just kicking it over the actual parking paint line. You missed it. You missed it big time. And what do you have to do? You get back in the car, you shut the door and you use your backup camera and you back up, you pull forward and you get between the lines because you don't want to miss the mark. You don't, you don't want to be that guy in the parking lot who's just blobbing over into all the other spots. Don't do that. You know what it's like to miss the mark? And we can laugh about these things, right? Because those scenarios don't make much difference. But what about other things? I mean, you don't want, you don't want your pharmacist missing the mark, right? As they're putting together prescriptions and putting medicines inside pills, this would be a bad thing to miss the mark. Would you agree? Of course, we, we all understand. This is a bad thing. Uh, you don't want the jury missing the mark as they're trying to determine innocence or guilt. This is not a good situation to miss the mark in. When it comes to spiritual matters, it's no different. In fact, what you may not know is that the word sin, a word that we use almost exclusively in church in matters of, of spiritual discussion and conversation, the word sin literally means to miss the mark. We talk about Matt missing the target in the Olympics, right? Well, when it comes to your faith, sin in similar fashion is you missing the mark, missing the target of what God has called you to do and be. Sin is you missing the mark for obeying God. That's what sin literally means. And today, and literally in some of the weeks to come, we're going to talk about the magnitude of this problem the magnitude of sin. And my point isn't to somehow have you walking away just with your head down, right? And just full of shame and my life is terrible. No, 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 no. But if you don't understand the magnitude of the problem, you'll never appreciate and understand the magnificence of the solution. For some of us, our faith, it almost feels apathetic. It feels boring. It feels like, oh, you know, it's just, it's just something that I know, right? And there's nothing that you're doing with it. There's nothing that really uh, invigorates you or brings a measure of passion to you. And it's because you've never really caught the true depth of what sin looks like in your life. You just don't get it. You don't understand what Jesus has really done for you. So let's talk about the first sin for a second. Well, let's rewind the tape, shall we? You know, remember the old the old VHS tape tapes? Please, what was it? Be kind, rewind, right? If you ever grew up going to like the rent and go video store, be kind, rewind. Blockbuster did that, or you got you got a little fine, right? Well, today, no fine, right? But let's rewind all the way to the beginning right? The very first book of the Bible, it's called Genesis. Uh, you'll see the verse on the screen here in just a moment, but here's the first account, the first moment of missing the mark of sin. Genesis chapter 2, 15 through 17. Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. So we have paradise. We have the Garden of Eden. We also have, if you go and you read some of the context and footnotes and you read a bit more about it, we've got perfect relationship with God. Life is grand. God puts a few things in order here. Adam and Eve are to work the garden, right? But there's one tree. Don't eat from that. If you do, if you disobey, the consequence of this, the wages of this is going to be death. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Did he really say that? Some of you have felt that same tension in your own heart where you're second guessing what you really know deep down to be right. And you push that little, you push it away. You push the Holy, the voice of the Holy Spirit away and sometimes welcome the voice of the serpent bringing temptation into your heart. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, Adam, who was with her, and he ate it. And here we have the very first sin. Corruption has officially begun, right? And and while Adam and Eve do not, uh, they don't die instantly in this moment. It's not like uh, God is on Mount Olympus, right? Throwing lightning bolts because, you know, this, this, in this exact moment of, of sinful disobedience. But what we see is that what now enters the earth and what enters the world and what enters the nature of humanity is now that of sin, of missing the mark. What was, what was once perfect relationship is now fractured. And everything moving forward is like an earthquake. And if you've ever seen the, you know, the disaster movies, I love, a, I love a good disaster movie, right? And the earthquakes that are in disaster movies are never what earthquakes really look like, right? But in the disaster movies, you know, the tectonic plates are shaking and the earth is just ripping apart, right? And while that's great for Hollywood, Oftentimes it doesn't look that in real, like that in real life. But imagine, spiritually speaking, it's not that too far from the truth of what is happening. In that that fracture is continuing to get wider and wider. Right? The gap, righteousness, holiness, right versus wrong. It's just getting deeper and wider, more heinous, more depraved, et cetera, et cetera etc. Great story, Pastor Andy. Thanks for taking us all the way back to Genesis. But how does that affect us? I'm so glad you asked that question. But it's the right one to ask as we're looking at firm foundations. Many times we understand like some of the bare bones of a story, but we don't understand how it really, uh, what does this do in my life today? How does this bear out in my life right now? So to ask the question again, how does Adam and Eve's sin from thousands of years ago affect you today? In other words, why does this matter? Turn to Romans 5 verse 12. Here's what the scriptures teach us. Paul is writing to the church in Rome and he says, therefore, Just as sin entered the world through one man, that being Adam, and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all have sinned. Now, sometimes when Paul writes, he can be a little wordy. He can be a little confusing. So let's paraphrase this for a second. Sin has entered the world through one man. Well, who's that one man? That one man is Adam and, and, and Eve. We just read about the account of them disobeying God for the very first time. In other words, they said, our way is better than your way. 
which is ultimately slang for what all of us do when we sin against God. We're ultimately looking at him and saying, I think I got this. I think my way is better than your way. And so that's what happened. And sin entered the world through one man and the price for a, a, a disobedient person before a perfect and holy God is death. The wages of sin, the Bible tells us, is death. And that's exactly what entered the world. Prior to sin, Adam and Eve would have lived forever in the Garden of Eden in perfect relationship with God. But the consequence of sin, of the stain of it, before a perfect and righteous and holy God. It's like you, you trying to step into the throne room of heaven and we're just, we're evaporated. Because sin and God's holiness, they cannot coexist. Just can't happen. That's how holy God is. And that's also how nasty sin is. Now, every single year, you may be one of these people. People, people are spending millions of dollars every year trying to determine who their ancestors are. Right? Ancestry.com, if you've heard of it, that is a that is a booming business because people want to know their history. They want to know where they've come from. They want to know where they hail from. They want to know all the stories, you know, that come. And if you've ever talked to somebody who really has their family tree down, many times they're proud of it. And they love sharing stories, especially if they're linked to some, like, historically famous, you know, person or moment throughout history. It's exciting to know and to be able to trace your heritage all the way back. And when we talk about sin and when we talk about missing the mark and when we talk about Adam and Eve, ultimately what we're getting at here and the reason that this is important is that we are tracing our family tree all the way back to the beginning. When Romans and Paul writes that, that sin entered the world through one man, it's not that it just kind of appeared like fog in the sky. It's that sin literally has been soaked into the very spiritual DNA, the heritage, the ancestry of everything and everyone coming after Adam and Eve. In other words, sin and death are part of your spiritual DNA. And unfortunately for us, sin always produces death. Death in your relationships, death in your ultimate, your supreme relationship with you and God. Literally just the decaying, the death of everything that you're trying to do. Sin, when we, when we, when we try to move forward in ways that we, uh, that we are, where we're disobedient to God, right? What is always produced is dysfunction, right? Death, the inability for things to build properly, move forward well. And the most, obviously the most significant of all, the death of your spirit and your relationship with a perfect and holy God. You, ladies and gentlemen, are the only thing in all of creation, the Bible says, that, that has been made in the image of God. There is a measure of likeness that you have to God in that you have spirit. But when we sin, this thing, right, that's inside of you, that the likeness of God, it's tarnished, it's broken, it's damaged, it dies because sin produces death every time. And this is our spiritual DNA. Um. In, in England, there's a young guy, he's 26 years old. His name is Hugh, and I may mess up pronouncing his last name. Grosvenor, okay? It's a mouthful, right? If you're from England and you're watching, sorry if I just completely butcher this. 26 years old, and unfortunately, uh, at 26, his father passed away. His dad was about 67 years old. 
And when he died, he left an inheritance for his son, for Hugh. And what's interesting is that Hugh became, at 26, the Duke of Westminster, okay? And he inherited over 300 acres of land and some of the most pristine real estate in all of London. And along with his inheritance of land, uh, he inherited about $12.5 billion, making him one of the youngest billionaires in the entire world. This was just a few years ago. Now, what's interesting is that Hugh, he didn't work for this. He didn't build a business for this, right? He didn't go and, you know, he didn't go get a lottery ticket and even do that. You know, he, he didn't spend a few bucks on the Powerball and walk away with $12.5 billion, right? None of the things, he, he couldn't have done this. He couldn't manufacture this. It wasn't possible. He got it with no work, with nothing, and that's no slight to him. He simply inherited it because of the DNA that he has. Who is he related to? He's related to his father. He's related to his grandfather and his great-grandfather. And I don't even know what his family did for a living. I don't know who built the first business or how it happened or what came about. I don't have any of those details for you. I simply know that Hugh, when his father passed away, because of who he was related to, he inherited all of this wealth. And now you can have a little bit of a grasp of what this looks like spiritually speaking. Because many of us have this idea that, that Christianity and following Jesus is just basically being a good person. Just be a good guy and everything is fine. And what you're missing, in the same way that Hugh inherited an amazing, awesome fortune, right? By virtue of who he is related to, by virtue of who you're related to, spiritually speaking, you've inherited something tragic, a sinful nature, and there's not anything that you can do about it. By virtue of who you are as a human, you have inherited a sinful nature and sin always produces death. It's bad news, isn't it? It is. It is bad news. I don't have any way to package this for you and put a nice wrap around it and a bow around it. It's not good news. And yet, if we don't understand the magnitude of the problem, we will never understand the magnificence of the solution. We've got to start with where things have gone off the rails. And it started thousands of years ago in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And we can keep talking about sin. In fact, we aren't done. We're going to talk some more about it next week. But you need to grasp the reality that it doesn't matter how good you are, you still have a nature that is broken and that is dead on the inside by virtue of who you simply are related to. Romans chapter 3, verse 22, there's no difference, Paul writes, between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody has fallen short. Nobody's exempt. No one, no one can, you know, okey-doke this. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. How is that possible? Because of who you're related to. It's what you've inherited. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, we're, we're in the next few weeks, we're going to get to the amazing gift of who Jesus is. But if for some reason you're only here for this one message, then let me also remind you. Let me, let me, let me connect all the dots for you briefly, even though we're going to do it uh, with greater detail in the weeks to come. The bad news is bad news, but the good news is even greater news. 
And that is that Jesus did what you and I couldn't do. Number one, his nature is different than ours, which is why he was born of a virgin, right? The Virgin Mary. His, literally, his DNA is different than you and I. We call him Jesus the Son of God, right? His birth was miraculous. He doesn't, he's not related to Adam and Eve fully in the same way that you and I are. And because he doesn't have the nature that you and I have, he lived a perfect life and sacrificed his life on behalf of you and I. What is he? He, he is the gift of God and offers eternal life through what he has accomplished and done for us on the cross. That is the amazing gift that Jesus has for you and I in spite of all of our brokenness, of our of spiritual ancestry, in spite of the death that sin has produced. In the same way that Matt Emmons lined up that shot in 2004, thinking he had just gotten a gold medal. Sin does this to us. And that sin promises you everything and it delivers nothing. And it's so easy to think that we've, we're gaining the world, but the reality is we're losing everything. Because sin always produces death. It's like lining up only to discover you made the shot, but you completely missed the mark. That's what sin does. That's who we are as a people. So what on earth can we do about it? I'm so glad that you asked. Sounds like we need a miracle. I and mean, what can we possibly do about our condition? How can we change things? Well, in the coming weeks, we're going to find out. Because there is, in fact, a miracle. And I've already alluded to it from Romans chapter 6. Come back here next week. And we're going to keep unpacking what it means to have firm foundations. And to really understand what Jesus has done for us. Father, we thank you in this moment. Lord, that you're, you're stretching us. You're growing us. You're helping us to really understand who you are and what you've done for us. Help our foundations to be strong. Help us to know, help us to have the knowledge, literally of, of you, the knowledge of the Lord, Lord, that we might uh, grow in strength, that we might grow in understanding, that we might grow with greater foundations. Help us to follow you. Help us to become more like you. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. See you right back here next week. Thank you, Pastor Andy, for that wonderful message. I'm really excited for this new series talking about firm foundation mm -hmm. and being able to learn a little bit more about what it actually means to have a foundation of Jesus. Learning today from Pastor Andy about the magnitude of sin, missing the mark for trying to obey God. He talked about that and he alludes at the end of it that it's bad news, sin is bad <laughs> news, but there is good news yes. in the gift of Jesus. And so I'm excited to hear more about that, to learn more about that, and just grow in our foundations. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of growing in our foundations, one of the big things about our faith is baptism. Yeah. Which we're going to have here at High Point Church on Easter Sunday. Yes. We're going to have our baptism. So Go ahead and take text HP info at 97,000 if you're interested in being baptized, yeah. um, if you have any questions about mm -hmm. baptism. Um, someone will reach out to you and, you know, get you connected and get you any information that you may need. Yes. Um, so, I mean, not only do we want to see you on Easter Sunday, <laughs> we would love to have you. But if you want to be baptized, join us on yes. this day. It's a great day to celebrate and just be a part of what Jesus is doing in our life. We love yeah. being able to participate in that with you. Yes. So, yes, text HP info to 97,000 for that. And I mentioned earlier, men, we didn't forget about you. Yeah. We have a men's conference coming up. It's going to be in Jacksonville, Florida. It's called the Advanced Conference. We have more information 
to come for you guys, but it's going to be a great weekend. It's in May, the 13th and 14th. Okay. Any other information, we'll make sure you guys have it. Yeah. But it's going to be an awesome time for y'all to come together, bond as men, mm -hmm. I don't know, eat stuff probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> play Lots of French games. fries. <laughs> French fries, maybe. <laughs> I know they play games. It'll be a great time, though. Yeah. Um, so we encourage you to mark those days off, check the info for that, and be a part of it. And then next week, what we're, are we doing? We're going to be all online next Last week. Last Sunday, we're all here. So we hope to see all of you guys, plus more. Plus <laughs> more, yes. Here next Sunday. Yes. And with that, have a great week. Bye, everyone. Air fryer has revolutionized oh, French completely. fries. Really? It's oh, revolutionized yeah. everything. Putting everything, vegetables right. in the air fryer, game changer. Chicken in the air fryer. Game changer. Extra juicy. Okay, we're getting off. Did I wear this last week? I feel like I did. Um, maybe you're watching and you don't really have much of a foundation spiritually at all, and so that's why you're here. Con congratulations. Um, let's take this over.